In the last couple of videos, we've been working with the cost curve graph. Namely, we developed the marginal cost, average cost, average variable cost graph. We know why the curves are shaped the way they are, and we know that this blue line here is the supply curve for the firm, and we understand why. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from the firm's supply curve to the industry supply curve. And we'll talk a little bit about how this graph works and how this, these two graphs work together. In the last video, we motivated this firm supply curve by saying, given a market price, what quantity is the firm going to provide? And that's our rule. We set marginal cost equal to the price, and that is how the firm maximizes profits when it is a price-taking firm. So it chooses to supply this quantity. And we do that with each price above average variable cost, because that's the only place where it's actually worth producing for the firm. And we get to trace out a locus of points that tell us the quantity that the firm provides as a function of the price. So what does this imply for the entire industry's supply curve? Let's take a simplification. Let's say that every firm is exactly like this one. Now, if every firm is just like this one, every firm is supplying Q. Suppose there are 10,000 uh, 10, firms just like this particular firm. What would happen is, at a price of P, we can bring it over here to this axis, and we can say that the total quantity in this industry is, say, 10,000 times the number, uh, or times the quantity that each firm provides. So, Given that price, there's a point on the industry supply curve. Now we can do this for each and every price that we have here, and we get to trace out lowest of points. What you'll see is that because this is upward sloping, the industry supply curve is also upward sloping. Because we have n firms or 10,000 firms, we're able to multiply this quantity by the number of firms, and we get the industry quantity. So we get our supply curve for the industry. So that's how you go from a graph like this, where we just have one firm, to a graph like this, where we have many firms, to an industry. Now, we would do the same thing if we had firms with different cost curves. What we would do is we'd just take each firm's supply curve and we would sum horizontally. If they weren't identical, we couldn't do this multiplication trick. But if we make the assumption that they're identical, we can go from this graph to this graph just in a snap. So that gives us our industry supply curve. And as we know from consumer theory, there's also an industry demand curve. So the question becomes, what is the equilibrium price if there are n firms that look just like this? As we construct each firm supply curve, we add them up horizontally, get our industry supply curve we find where it intersects the demand curve which is given in the problem. Then we get the price, the equilibrium price and quantity. Each firm will provide little q star and p star will be our equilibrium price. This is a bit more complicated than traditional standard supply and demand analysis but what it goes ahead and shows us is a very significant component of equilibrium. It's that it depends on how many firms we have in the industry. Now, keep in mind that the number of firms in an industry isn't automatically fixed. The firms just like this decide whether to enter or exit the industry based on how many profits they're making. So if the equilibrium price is really high, we're going to have a lot of entry. If equilibrium price is really low, we're not going to have entry, and we're going to have a smaller number of firms. We'll go from this graph to this graph, we'll have to multiply by a smaller number. So, what happened here? The way we've drawn this, it looks like the equilibrium price is up here. The firm gets this box. Why do I say the firm gets that box? This area here is the revenue that the firm brings in under the equilibrium price. This area here 
is that's the average cost of producing Q star units times Q star units. Well, that's just the cost. So, this big green area minus this black area gives us the red area. Revenue minus costs give us profit. So it turns out that when we're thinking about economic profit, positive profit is a good thing. It means that there is the best opportunity for those resources. If those resources can earn positive profit, firms might as well enter. So if we see a positive profit rectangle here, what we'll see is that the number of firms will start to increase as soon as it can. So in the short run, this graph where we're multiplying by n is the right idea. We should just multiply by the number of firms that are in the industry. But in the long run, that number will increase. So when that number increases, what happens is we multiply by a bigger number and we get a new supply curve from entry. When we get entry into the market, that will drive the price down, as you can see here. We do this again. We see that the price is still above average cost, so firms still make a positive profit. And this process of entry continues. And what we'll see is that in the long run, the price gets driven down to the minimum of average costs. The key insight here is that this is a very useful graph it's a rich set of tools that can apply to a whole array of supply and demand problems. Um, and it's something that will help, uh, help you understand a lot of complicated scenarios in the world, especially when we're talking about how firms' costs are affected, how demand shifts, and how industries respond to accommodate demand shifts, cost increases, or cost decreases.